Hello everybody, welcome to this Tidy Cal review. Today I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about Tidy Cal. And as always, if you do have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I will also be leaving a discount link in the description of this video so that you can always get your money's worth for Tidy Cal. So Tidy Cal is a way that you can integrate with your calendars so you can have really efficient scheduling for businesses, for meetings, all like that. So you can integrate it with your Google Calendar, Apple Calendar, Microsoft Calendar, whatever you use. And you're able to do all of this in one very nice seamless place. So we're beginning on the booking type page. So once you've integrated your calendar, you'll get access to this and you can skip and you can obviously integrate it later. And that's what I've done. However, when you've signed up, you will have your first page here. So you're able to create new booking types. So say for example, you did have meetings. What it originally you know, comes up with as a template is you have a 15 minute meeting, a 30 minute meeting and a 60 minute meeting that people can book and talk you on. So you can either turn the booking on and off, you can copy the link to this particular booking and you also have a little description for what it's about that you simply click and you can obviously edit by hitting the edit button in the bottom left and you can change the name, the URL, the description, how many people per time slot are, are allowed for each meeting, whether it's online, in person or no location specified. You can have the minimum meeting padding, you can have a duration, you can see how far out people can book, so how far in advance people can um, book your services and book a meeting and how or and how soon or close to the meeting that people cannot book so that you're obviously prepared so what you can do is simply move these up move these down um, and then these are obviously done in days hours and minutes and then you obviously also have the days that you're available so if there's weekends that you don't work you're obviously able to set these to unavailable by simply unchecking it um, but what you can also do is simply check mark it and then you're able to add some specific times you're available and by hitting add window you're able to have you know a lunch break if you want in the middle uh, by simply changing this to say 8 until 12 and um, by simply changing that to 12 and then you could have a like a one hour lunch break by changing this to 13 uh, or 1 and then change this to p.m. so 1 30 p.m to 5 p.m. and that's how you would do a lunch break if you want it and then you can also at the bottom select some questions that you want to be add you can also have a confirmation redirect you can charge for the particular booking you can make sure it's private and you can obviously select a category for your particular type and it's the same for mostly all of them. You have 15, 30, and 60, and obviously you can share it on either SMS, you can share it on email, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also embed it on your website so anyone visiting your website can book a meeting from there. Um, and then you're able to also clone it, and this will create an identical one that you can then add to your booking types. As you can see, we've now got two 30-minute meetings for you to use. So moving on, we then have our bookings page. Now you can either do this and you can basically have a little look at what it looks like when people do end up booking. So you have a little name for your uh for your you know company and then you simply have the all the options for the meetings that you can book and the book now and when you do hit book now you can select the date the time so you can see these are the days that you can book for any with a circle around it you can book any that don't have a circle or a grayed out not possible so if i were to hit one then you'd be able to set the time to so do 1 15 p.m and then you put your name and your email and then hit book and that's what it would look like for people booking your you know booking your session and booking their meeting under bookings you're able to view where all of the bookings that you've actually got are in so you can view the upcoming bookings you can see the past ones the cancelled ones and then all of them in total and these will all appear on this page here in a really seamless nice fashion under the contacts tab we have the amount of contacts that we have and the, how many bookings they have and when it was created so that you can basically look at who it is you can contact them if you need to talk to them about something to do with a meeting if you need to cancel last minute or any sort of that thing like that and you need to give them information about something that they've got or something to bring along anything that you might need to talk to somebody about prior to a booking or even after a booking this is where you'll be able to find it and what you can also do is export this as a csv and this will then be sent you can you know send it to people in your company send it to them to see what you know information you have loads of different uses there are for having a contact page and it's really nice that this is built in in such a really seamless way and if you do have a lot of contacts you're able to use the search bar here and that will basically give you the option to obviously just search for anyone that you want if you have that under integrations this is where you can integrate the specific calendars that you've got so we have google office 365 and apple so microsoft google and apple and what you simply do is you would hit one of these and this will bring you to that uh, to that you know website sign in page and then you simply you know link it with your account whichever one actually has a calendar of course because obviously you want to have a calendar ready 
registered to your account. And most people are actually going to want to do this with their business account instead of their personal one because having everything linked to a personal account can sometimes, you know, clog up your inboxes, interfere with, you know, personal things that you've got on your calendar. You don't want to be muddled up with other things and all sorts of things. So then you've obviously got the integration with Zoom. So if you want to have online things or online meetings, you're able to integrate so that video conferences can take place on Zoom. Really, really handy so you can instantly give somebody a link, instantly create, you know, chat rooms for them, and you can have dedicated link generation so that people are able to join your Zoom meeting with, you know, specific permissions and all sorts very, very easily as soon as they've made a booking and that time has come round. And then finally, payments. If you do want to charge for any of your bookings, you can obviously put your PayPal email in. You're then able to put your publishable key for Stripe if this is another option that you want to be paid with, and then your secret key, and this is how you would get paid on those platforms. You also have um, automations with Zapier, so you're able to integrate your bookings with other applications and automate a plethora, a vast plethora rather, of things you're able to do. And then you're obviously just able to connect it with your Zapier account. You're able to link it with things like Discord. You're able to link it with basically anything that you want, even on your website or on, you know, IFTTT, basically whatever you need. And then you're able to do it like that. And then finally, you're able to create your own custom integrations with an API key. Obviously, this does require lifetime access. So then you've got the bookings directory, and this is a really large area and a conglomeration of different people's bookings that they obviously charge for or will give you. So if you do want to have a look and you're using, you know, TidyCal, not so much to make your own, but in order to use it for your own self gain and, you know, do that and learn more things and work out how to do things, then you can do that as well. It's a really seamless page. You have many, many pages up to 147, as you can see, with loads of different people. So if you wanted a tutorial for example you'd have a little look at everything that has a tutorial so a 30 minute google calendar tutorial to help you set up and manage appointments schedule and income 125 dollars and you're able to just basically also sort by the calendars category so you have animals business education entertainment faith fashion fitness food health music politics science sports technology and travel and you're basically able to book it as simple as that and you're able to have this so that you can learn even more things to do with a website if you do need help with anything lots of them are free lots of them are paid it really depends on who's doing that and stuff like that but this is also a really nice way of seeing how your you know booking will appear for people so this is what it would look like and these are people that have, you know, set up the prices, set up the description, set up the time in a really good way. So you can even use this as inspiration for your own booking page as well. If we hit on the profile button, you're able to view your booking page and all the information about that. So you have the link to your booking page, which is for me um, at tidycal.com forward slash reviews. You have your names, where you are, your currency or your, your preferred currency, availability interview between available bookings. So how much of a break you want between certain bookings. You can have an overall booking page title and booking page description that will come up instead of just the little smiley face in it saying opulent um, and basically it's a more way of you know customizing your profile giving it a bit more personality as well and then at the bottom right here we have our support so it's really useful if you do need help um, and then you're simply able to answer a very simple question they will also give you some instant answers to things that you might need help with but if you don't you can obviously put your name your subject your email address and the thing that you're having an issue with and it's really really simple you're just able to do it like that but that is more or less it for TidyCal. So what do I think about TidyCal? And honestly, I think it's, it's brilliant. It's a really efficient way of managing your bookings, the way that you can take others' inspiration and you can basically do it in such a seamless way. You can set completely, you know, work by your own accord and work by your own hours is a brilliant, brilliant way. You know, the, the ability to set breaks in between each, um, each appointment, the length of the appointment, the location, the integrations with Zoom, the integrations with all the different three types of primary calendars that people will use I think is excellent so it's one of those websites that it's just it works really really well and they've taken it very they, they've made it very very simple but they've also made made sure that it doesn't lack on what there is and it doesn't lack on features so I think they've absolutely nailed it and it's a great booking website if you're looking to do that but thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you next time goodbye